gospel reading this day comes from Mark, the seventh chapter. From there Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Seraphonician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an, an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Aphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated at this time. Our text today is one that shows Jesus in a different light what we're used to. Today's text demonstrates Jesus' humanity, and it also demonstrates how God uses people to cause us to reinterpret God's will. But before we dive into our text, it is very important today to examine what comes before our text today in the Gospel of Mark. So the Gospel text from last week which comes directly before our text today. So if you recall, last week we heard about how many of the traditions of the Jews were getting in the way of living out God's Word. They were following their traditions more than they were following God's Word. Jesus even said to them, You abandon the commandment of God hold to human tradition. <clears throat> Jesus was really letting these people know how their traditions were poisoning their community, leading them away from God. So keep this in mind as we walk through our gospel text today. Traditions impeding God's will. Our gospel text begins with Jesus arriving in the region of Tyre. Tyre was a Roman port city, which would have been filled with many different people of many different races and cultures. Therefore, it would have been a city filled with Gentiles, those who were not Jewish. Jesus arrives in this city and doesn't want anyone to know he is there. He has come to Tyre, a non-Jewish city, to a place where his fame may not have yet spread in order to get some rest and relaxation, a time of peace. And yet, it was not meant to be. Upon hearing that Jesus had come to town, a Gentile woman, a Seraphonician, immediately seeks him out to ask for his help. She begged Jesus to cast a demon out of her daughter. At this point in our text, things get a little tricky and a little strange. Jesus' response 
response to this woman is what is strange. Jesus says to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Wow. Where is the loving Jesus who heals all those who come to him? What happened to you? Why is Jesus calling a person a dog? Why, in fact, is he calling all people who are like this woman dogs? For he said, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. What an insulting thing to say. We have a word in English that is a cruel word for a mother dog. You can make a correlation. Jesus is not being nice here, brothers and sisters. It has been tried on many occasions to make light of what Jesus is saying here, but there's no nice way to spin what Jesus is Jesus is calling the Gentiles dogs, which can never be a nice thing to say, especially in contrast to children. We would like to be children, not dogs, right? Okay, okay good. And recall what Jesus has been teaching before our text today. You abandon the commandment of God to hold to human tradition. Isn't this what Jesus was just teaching against? Holding to the racist tradition of the Jews towards the Gentiles. Instead of loving your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, in this moment of weakness, in this moment where he doesn't want to be bothered, where he just wants to get away and rest for a little while, he is bombarded with another request for healing, and this time by a Gentile woman. So what does God do with this response? How does the woman react here? This woman does not get affronted. He does not throw back another insult in response. Instead, she uses Jesus' insult to remind Jesus of who God is. She says to him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus is confronted with his own tradition of racism. Jesus is confronted with his own teaching about traditions making void the word of God. Jesus is confronted with the evil intention of slander which has come from his heart to this woman. And Jesus recognizes how God is using this woman to reinterpret his mission in the world. Jesus in this moment was refusing to help a Gentile woman. From this woman's response, Jesus is reminded that all people are loved and sustained by God, and that even those outside the Jewish circle are loved by God. Jesus is shown that his mission is not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. This is a turning point in Jesus' ministry. A point where Jesus is not the one teaching, but rather, Jesus is the one being taught. Our text today is an example of how, God's, how God speaks. I think we often think about how Jesus had a special connection with God, which is true. But I think we also imagine that if we could hear God how Jesus heard God, we would be better people too. Yes? Have we thought that? Maybe? Maybe you guys have heard that. <laughs> However, our text today demonstrates how
how God speaks to Jesus just as God speaks to us. God uses this woman's response to reshape Jesus' understanding of his mission for the world. This is how God spoke to Jesus in our text today. And this is how God speaks to us oftentimes in our journey here on earth. God challenges us in how we think about God's mission on earth by sending people to us to do just that, to make us think about who God is and about who God loves to challenge us to think about our traditions and God's commandments and how they are often times at odds with one another. From this experience in Mark's Gospel, Jesus' eyes and ears were open to see God's mission as something that extends beyond the Jewish people, as something for the rest of the world. And we can see how this changed to Jesus' ministry. Jesus, after this incident, leaves Tyre and heads toward the Sea of Galilee by the way of Sidon. Sidon is another Roman port city, another Gentile-filled town. On Jesus' journey, some people bring to Jesus a deaf man with a speech impediment. It is interesting, however, how Jesus deals with this individual. Usually, Jesus heals people when they are brought him, among the crowd in front of everyone. This time, however, Jesus takes him aside, alone, away from the crowd. This is strange. Jesus heals him and then tells him, and those who brought him, not to tell anyone. This makes me think that this man was probably also a Gentile. That Jesus learned that his mission was also for the non-Jews. However, he didn't want word of this spread. So he told them not to tell anyone. And here, I think, we have another instance of God stepping in. Jesus told them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. This too shows that what God has done is meant to be something that is shared. It is meant to be a story that shows God's mercy and love. It is meant to be something that is spoken about, something that is rejoiced over. Something that is shared to glorify God. And this is for all people, whether Jew or Gentile, that when God does something in our lives, it is meant to be zealously proclaimed to those around us, to share the good news of God's love. Our gospel today is a very strange text. It began with Jesus insulting a woman and then being challenged about God's mission in the world. Then the rest of our gospel story is about a deaf man with a speech impediment being restored to hearing and speech. A story about a man regaining his senses. The author of the gospel of Mark has an interesting way of juxtaposing these two stories together. Where in our first story, Jesus has his eyes and ears open because of an encounter with God through a Gentile woman, where God challenges the traditions that Jesus was raised in. And then in turn, from this experience of having his eyes and ears open, Jesus goes and restores the senses of another. It is from God opening our eyes and our ears that we, in turn, are called to do the same for others. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you today to keep your eyes and your ears open to how God is challenging you and your understanding of who God is. And who God loves. God uses others to help us grow closer to Him, whether it is by challenging or whether it is by hearing stories.
God's mercy and love. Brothers and sisters, I also want you to be open to the possibility that you may be the one called to challenge another. That you may be the one called to zealously share what God has done for you. Because it is by conversation about who God is and what God has done that we grow in our understanding of God's mission for the world. That we grow in understanding of who God is and who God loves. For we have been shown today in our text and throughout the gospel story that God's love extends beyond our imagining and even sometimes beyond the imagining of Jesus. This is the good news, brothers and sisters. God's love goes beyond what we can imagine. God's love is that which goes beyond our understanding. God's love is for all people, claiming all as children. This is the God who we serve. And this is the God who we love. One who chides his son into loving more broadly. One who sent his son not to condemn the world, not to claim some as children and some as dogs. No. God sent his son so that the entire world might be saved through him. That by teaching, suffering, Dying and being raised again to life. Jesus might bring life and hope to the world. That there is life after death. That there is an end to pain, suffering, hurt, and loss. That there is hope to be found in God through Jesus. The one God sent to declare and demonstrate God's love for the world. This, brothers and sisters, is the good news. That God's love for you is something you cannot begin to measure or comprehend. Regardless of what you have done, regardless of who you are, God loves you. You are not dogs, brothers and sisters. You are children of God. Amen.